Okay, everybody. Now we're going to jump right back in uh, with another keynote. Uh, this time with uh, with Chris Hutchins. Uh, he's the VP and Chief Data and Analytics Officer at Northwell Health. Uh, it's a pleasure having him with us today. Um, he's uh, he's a senior healthcare leader with over twenty years of experience developing analytics teams, uh, establishing data governance, data warehousing, and business intelligence automation, and uh, delivering solutions focused on patient experience and outcomes. Um, as you uh, be able to tell, he has extensive experience with organizational transformation. Uh, he specializes in integrating analytic IT and informatics teams across organizational lines to improve solution delivery and, uh, and enable data-driven insight. Uh, and Chris, today is going to be talking to us uh, about advancing enterprise analytics and the keys to success. Great, uh, great topic, great session. So everybody, please join me in welcoming Chris Hutchins. Chris, it's all yours. Go ahead. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Hello and good afternoon, or it could be still good morning for some of you folks. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to, to speak with you this morning or today. And uh, I just want to go over some, some high level things that, that you can do to help advance your enterprise analytics. You know, whether you're an individual contributor or you have overall responsibility for the enterprise, there's some, some things that I found useful over the, over the course of my career. Um, as, as I'm sure all of you are learning by the, on a daily basis and adapting and adjusting to the things that we learn. So I'll just share a few things. It's not necessarily prescriptive for every situation, um, but hopefully the, you know, the, this will give you a, a sense of what I found that works and some things that really haven't worked very well. Um, that doesn't mean they won't work for you, but again, this is just a little bit from my experience. And let me just jump into this presentation for you. Um, just a couple of um, slides here just to give you a sense of what we are. Norfolk Health is the largest private employer in the state of New York. Uh, we have roughly 23 hospitals and over 800 uh, outpatient facilities across the, the, the greater New York City and Long Island area. Uh, we have a little over 72,000 employees and um, probably about 11 million uh, plus uh, in our service area. And geographically, you, you can see where, how we're kind of spread out. These are the major hospitals. We do have some affiliations in addition to these, um, but just to give you a sense of what I'm up against here. Now, jumping into the challenge, I suspect many of you, no matter what industry you're in, you have something that looks like this when you try to put together a, a map of all the various systems that you have inside of your organization. Uh, this happens to be in the healthcare sector, but it, you know, as you can see, things like supply chain, employee management, financial stewardship, those types of things exist uh, in every industry. So th this is exactly what I inherit every time you know, we acquire a new facility, whether it's a, a hospital or even uh, a, a physician's practice. Um, there are a number of systems involved and there's data transfers that are going on um, between those platforms. Uh, many of which are needed to support those, those individual verticals. Uh, the, the challenge with that is when you need to bring them together, you, ha you have to have a way to do that and you have to be able to standardize somehow to, to create a way for that data to be shared appropriately and to generate the insights that are necessary across the organization. My particular mandate was to improve analytic capabilities across the enterprise. So just to give you a sense of what my, my team is dealing with, uh, we have, you know, over, actually this number is uh, not even the most recent, but we're now north of a thousand databases that my teams are responsible to manage, just the majority of the assets for the, the organization. Uh, just in our uh, electronic medical record platforms, we're doing four, over 4.7 billion updates across the layers in our data warehouse environment today. Uh, so scale is, is a real challenge here. Um, I think we found that a, Folks that have come into our organization from, from other organizations are a little taken back by the scale. And then some of the things that they are accustomed to doing from a technique standpoint, they, they just don't work well in these, <laughs> we're dealing with this, the size that we're, that we're, uh, we're managing here. So it, it's a constant um, effort just to continue to refine our skills as a team to make sure that we're learning the latest and greatest approaches to be as efficient as possible to make the data available with some high, high availability. And the, the second component here is really enabling the business units to enhance, advance their and enhance their analytic capabilities. This is an, was an important thing for me to start with when I arrived here because they were in the early stages of establishing a data warehouse environment. 
Um, but as you know, in any organization, there are a number of different verticals that have to be able to advance their capabilities. They have to have access to information. They need to understand you know, what's really happening inside of that environment. So for example, the finance team is going to need to do you know, all, all the accounting and accounts receivable, accounts payable. All those things have to occur uh, regardless of what I might be doing at the enterprise level to uh, bring in additional data sources or to integrate different types of data sources. So, you know, for example, bringing in clinical outcomes information and associating that with the, the financial performance of the organization or the cost component of it in particular is something that we monitor. What you see here is a list of a number of our verticals inside of the health system, some are specific to Northwell. Um, but these are groups that have significant capabilities to do, do analytics on their own. So part of you know, what our challenge is, is to figure out how do we help them advance or the things that we can do to partner with them to help them to be successful. And so let's talk about some of the concepts and some of the things that really have been proven to, to work very effectively. Number one is really to establish a service-oriented approach. And what I mean by that is that when you particularly are coming into a new organization, there are people who have uh, accountability and, and purviews for things that you may know very, very well. And you could probably uh, do a number of things to improve their access to information or even improve the analytic packages that they use. However, that's not always the, <laughs> the, the most endearing thing that you can do. So one of the things that I really stress is, is identifying the key verticals and the leaders that you can partner with. That partnership is going to be really critical to your success and your ability to help the organization to move forward. Uh, you have to understand that each of them are monitoring and analyzing uh, data to respond to really be able to be effective and improve or, or streamline the operations that they have uh, accountability for. Um, I may not always be able to deliver a solution, but one of the things that I've trained myself and I, I work with my team to do is figure out what level that we can engage on to be helpful and supportive. And sometimes that's just a matter of helping to connect them to uh, a resource um, or a data source. And sometimes it's being some project management type of support where helping them to clear some of the information security challenges uh, that, they, that they are faced with when they're standing up a new technology or that they're trying to deploy different solutions. Once you know who these folks are, you want to work on developing strategies to enable the leaders in their verticals to optimize their, their functions with effective analytics. This is where I think that the biggest win is when you're really under, understanding what the needs are of, of the organization, and in, in particular, those leaders. Um, you really want to try to figure out what are their pain points and see what you can do to, to help that. Now, if, if you happen to be an individual contributor role, I think this is an important thing to think about is you can probably find people who are willing to help solve problems <laughs> and uh, across verticals even at times. And that's one of the things that I, that I really put into practice in, in terms of how I deal with uh, other parts of the organization is reaching out to them and asking for help. Uh, oftentimes that's the thing that really helps them to understand that you are trying to be helpful. You're not trying to centralize the analytics and take over the world but you're really there to try to enable them. Which gets to the last point in the slide is, focus on enabling the experts to deliver transformational insights, become a force multiplier. Um, recognizing the complexity of your organization, no matter what's healthcare or any other industry, you really wanna understand that all of these different components of the business have to function efficiently and effectively for the organization to be successful. If one of them is not able to do that, then it impacts all the others. So as much as you can understand about the, the complexity of your organization, that helps you to figure out where all these verticals are and make sure that you're, you're focused on being a resource and an, invest, an asset to them. And the language is probably the, it, as important as anything. And that, that's really just to, like, for example, the concept, concept of data governance, uh, oftentimes people think that's a controlling mechanism. Um, while it can be, uh, how you refer to it uh, and how you perform that function really determines how well people receive that and, and they embrace it. Let's talk about a couple of different strategies 
Uh, the first point here was, was relative to the healthcare sector, but I think this can be applied in other industries as well. You know, identifying who the clinical, in our case, who the clinical leadership is that we needed to integrate with my technical team to make sure that we're delivering meaningful insights. Uh, the, the data data flow in an electronic medical record, if you're not familiar with it, um, can be very, very different depending on the vendor solution that you're, you're working with. Uh, the data tables and structures on the back end are not necessarily consistent either. So, for example, a, a Discharge diagnosis actually may live in more than one table or one um, uh, one database, even uh, inside of that inside of these environments. So, having an understanding of the workflow from the user interface, along with the backend uh, workflows, how the data falls into the the databases, this actually is an important thing to help the technologists to be able to select the right variation. Uh, discharge diagnosis may be in three different tables with a timestamp. Which one's the re most relevant one for the use case? So that partnership's really important. And I think you can do that with, with most anything where your technical teams are really going to rely on this, the, the business knowledge uh, of your partners from other parts of the business. We leverage our organizational structure and technology to facilitate collaboration. This is an important piece, as I mentioned, from the service orientation is really be that facilitator. It's kind of the hub and spoke model. I'm sure that you've heard, you know, probably used or, or heard about a lot. Um, it's really trying to be that conduit to helping people get where they need to go, get the have, have access to the analytics and to, again, advance their capabilities. Uh, when you're starting out you know, with, with the leaders to understand what their priorities are, that really should be part of how you lay out your roadmap for, for the direction you're going to take um, with the organization. And the last two points, these are things that we did in parallel. I've talked a little bit about this already, but we did establish an enterprise platform to support self-service analytics. Um, that was very primarily intended to relieve some of the pressure on the enterprise teams at the, and at the same time to help the different verticals in the organization to advance their capabilities. And I won't go through all of these different points, but it, I think it kind of drives the, home the point that we really want to try to take on the things that really should be handled at an enterprise level, like the, the, the challenges for um, building a central team really is not something that's going to be effective long term in a very large, diverse type of an organization only because you're, you're moving people away from the point of contact with the data, the, the origins of the data. And so there's definitely a, a limitation of when it comes to doing things at the enterprise level if you're depending on centralizing everything. Um, again, the very first point where the business units have legitimate business priorities, that doesn't change depending on what I'm doing at the enterprise level. So I really need to be aware of that and try to enable that as much as possible. And so, again, all, all of these different things are, are drivers. The traditional business intelligence platforms or uh, frankly, requiring some skill sets that are more difficult to acquire and, and retain. So self-service really kind of helps to deal with that as well. And why the self-service platform? In this day and age, <laughs> information security is probably the number one concern. Uh, that we have um, when it comes to ma managing the data in, in, the, in that as an asset of the corporation. Um, having everything behind the firewall and protecting the information is critical. Um, one of the things that it was a real benefit to us uh, as we stood up an enterprise environment for self-service is we now have some visibility into the priorities across the organization, which ultimately can inform the roadmap that we, we follow for or bring forward for the enterprise. So we're trying to constantly be monitoring the types of things that are in demand so that we can make sure our, our leadership team is aware and they can help to make decisions around the timing and sequence of large initiatives that we may take, take on as a organization. Then the, I think the last piece that I'll touch on here is just with the enabling of system, efficient system administration. Um, a lot of the, the partners in the, that we work with in the, in the visualization space uh, they have a very flexible model, and it's very easy for folks to download and <laughs> install their, their tools. And so one of the things we really try to do is keep a good 
good track of that. We look at things uh, by an IP range and, and we're provided with some information by these vendors and when people are downloading these things so that we can reach out to them and bring them onto the enterprise platform. We take the, the burden of data access provisioning, excuse me, to the enterprise environment and we help to manage their, their licensing, meaning that as they come up for renewal, we're making sure that they get renewed. We're communicating between the vendor and the individuals that are using the software. Now, just a couple of things on, on, that I already touched on here, but limiting the burden of access provisioning. Uh, one of the things that I do there is I try to have my team model the access provisioning. It's a, it exists inside of the, the platforms that people are, are getting the data from. In other words, if you have access to a specific set of data in, a particular, in one particular system, we try to make sure that that's consistent in the, the analytics environment, meaning that we don't have a, a separate security model and we don't have another provisioning process to validate that the access people are looking for is, is, is appropriate or not. Uh, I like to make sure that we don't get in the middle of deciding who has access to what, but would rather leave that in the hands of the business. Uh, and we just figure out how to support that and make sure that it scales. And the last point I think is a significant one, in order to enable large scale access, um, we really have to think through and work with the business to, to design some models that really make, some, make sense for them. They need to be extensible and scalable, and they need to enable a broad uh, level of inquisition in the areas of the business that they support. I'll give you a couple of examples of that so you understand what I mean. Um, you know, just examples of things that in, our, in the healthcare space, people really want to understand everything about our patient population that has uh, diabetes. Uh, we have another mark that's a data model that we've built around emergency services. Uh, there's two different ways that we look at that. One of them is from a log logistics and throughput standpoint, so that information needs to be real time. But then we also have it from a retrospective standpoint so that we can look at trends over time. Similarly with surgery, pharmacy, these are just a couple of examples but we work with the business to define, define a large scale data set that can enable as much uh, inquiry as possible and remove that lift from the central team and allow people to get, get their, the majority of their, their needs met uh, through a self-service capability and then leaving the, the more difficult and complex things for my team to do uh, in the central team. A couple of examples of our early successes. Um, you can see these are just basic visualizations, but you know, we're able to support logistics operations, we're able to measure productivity and throughput, as I, met, I mentioned. Uh, the collaboration is enabled through this. It's been extremely uh, impactful for us to do this. And then I think the next thing is really the branding components of it. So how do you position your, your function? So if you're building a central function, this is just as an example from the web, web portal that we designed. We purposefully named it an analytic resource center. You know, there's a number, another, a number of different names like the data concierge that I've seen. Um, those type of, I think the connotation is service orientation and being a resource. Uh, and that's how you want to really position your services in the organization to, to make sure that people don't feel like, again, you're trying to take over anything, but you're there to help. You're there to be a resource. And you know, there's different levels of proficiency and different verticals in the organization. And, and some actually can do pretty much anything themselves. Some need us to help, help with the data management, data curation. Um, some need full-scale uh, applications designed uh, to understand their data. But this is really an important thing to figure out what level to engage and really focus on being a support and a help to them. And another another point here I just want to make on the on the branding piece of it. It's, it's a really important thing as you're standing up um, in an enterprise self-services environment to make sure that folks are, are labeling and branding their content appropriately so it's easy for a consumer to know where this data is coming from and who, who do I need to go to. And so we work through some things that in our organization, we do have a marketing team that we work with and that we really partner with our, our business users to deal with that branding. If they need some help, we'll work with them to get a logo or something that they can tap on to some of their outputs so that it's, again, really clear where it's coming from. Then I think I'll, I'll end on this note and then take some questions. Again, the whole concept is to try to be a resource to your organization 
and look for the ways that you can engage. And I try not to say no, although on occasion uh, that, that becomes necessary, but it's a very rare occasion. Usually we can find a level to engage to provide some support to the organization. With that, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Bobby and we'll, we'll start our question and answers. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Chris. Um, we'll, we'll start out with, with the first one. Um, kind of, uh, I don't know if it's a, if it's a multiple part, but uh, it, it might not be a, a quick and simple answer. When you were talking about positioning analytics as a service, uh, mm -hmm. this is all going to come down to the silos. You know, when, when, when there are, and there usually are silos and people right. aren't really taking you up on it, how, how do you suggest approaching things with, uh, with them? Oftentimes, though, you know, the silos are obviously uh, a result of the organization having legitimate needs prior to having a long-term uh, uh, enterprise-level strategy. Uh, so one of the things that I find very effective is, again, asking for help. Um, you know, when I have something that's come up that needs to be addressed at the enterprise level and it needs finance data, for example, um, my team manages the databases. I could easily just access it. <laughs> but it's more important to make sure that the, the folks who are accountable for that, that data, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, 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 the subject matter, um, if, if they're accountable for it, we need to, to know that they're comfortable and they understand that we're, how we're using the data and how it's going to be reflected and essentially validated. So there's no surprises. Um, the finance people in particular are not fond of surprises when it comes to <laughs> analytic outputs being uh, published or shared if they're not vetted appropriately. So oftentimes what I find is, our, our, this is another great example in our institution, but there's a couple of folks that are exceptional in understanding the operations of the health system, both clinically and uh, like logistically, who happen to work in the finance area. <laughs> so uh, I think that that's an important thing to, to take into account where folks have very large purviews and you know, they don't want to be bothered for trivial stuff, of course. Um, but at the same time, if, if you're asking them to help, they usually will, will engage on that if you can help them to understand what the, what the business need is. Because ultimately, if they don't want their data to be misused, they really want it to be used appropriately. Okay, so do you find with a self-service approach that there are a lot of data quality Concerns? Yeah, there, there can be. And, you know, it's, it's, I've heard it said that you know, self service analytics is counterproductive and works, you know, it's a diametrically opposed <laughs> to, to good governance and good data quality. Uh, that can be the case. But as I showed you, the, the, the data marts or the data models that we stand up, uh, they don't necessarily have to be a mark, but they, you can model, build some views for people to access that are relatively safe and secure, meaning that you've worked with them to vet the quality and make sure that you're grouping things right, you're standardizing and normalizing things the way that they need to be. Uh, we, we don't do that in a vacuum. It really does take a, a partnership with the experts in the, on the business side to be able to do that. And as long as you're following those principles, then you're, you're not giving them not giving them access to information blindly and without context. What, what I mean by that is when you're looking at accounts receivable, for example, there's a way to understand it from a point of origin, but most importantly, we want to, we want to understand where is it right now? And so in the instance of a, an insurance claim, um, if we send out a, a bill to the insurance, there's a receivable there and it's associated with that insurance. So what's really important is not where it starts, but where it is today. So once it's been processed and paid, and the, there's a, let's say there's a, there's a copay out there. If I look at it from the point of origin, it looks like the insurance company is liable for that, that dollar amount. But in reality, it's a guarantor. And so in my accounts receivable marts, I define it as the current state, regardless of the point of origin. And by doing that, it makes it really easy for folks to understand the context of the data, and to really who's who's uh, accountable for, for the balance. That's just one example, but those type of things exist uh, in almost every kind of vertical that you can deal with within, within an organization. So that partnership with the business is, is really critical uh, to, to build these effective structures 
that, that you can allow them a broad level of access that doesn't make it susceptible to error. Okay, yeah, we're kind of sticking with uh, with self service theme here, uh, if you will. Um, and I'm not sure if you uh, if you covered it now, but the question popped up: <clears throat> how, how do you have good data governance with self service? I mean, is it possible to have good data governance and self service? Can you have both of them? You can. Not not the easiest thing to do, but but you can. <laughs> and, and again, I think it goes back to the approach that I'm talking about, where we're, we're really trying to make sure that as we're defining analytics or the outputs that are being used or even the standard as standardization process that it's that it's something that's it's compliant with a couple of different things from a governing body standpoint in healthcare we have HIPAA we have um, Center for Medicare Services uh, the AMA uh, the CDC they, they provide guidelines that we use and we have to adhere to from a performance perspective just to continue to be a, a licensed facility. So those are things we start with out of the gate. We do those things. We don't ask for people to approve that. We will bring it forward and make sure that people understand that we document it and we publish it uh, inside of the organization. And then the only time we really do any other types of uh, translation to the data or really when it's being dr driven from a business perspective. And to do that, um, again, partnering with the, with the business leaders who are accountable for those data domains is really the critical piece of it. And then ultimately, we do have a, 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 a team that's responsible to ratify uh, policies and uh, standards when it comes to governance so that it has that visibility. And we're not defining the same thing three different ways to get three different answers. Um, we've never been more uh, front and center as it has been during the recent pandemic. Uh, the, the needs for reporting to data to the CDC, to the federal and state governments are uh, significant and they change frequently. So it's really important to make sure that you're really in sync um, with the people that are responsible for the, the domains and make sure that you're, you're trying to follow um, these the standards that are being used within those verticals. And again, the verticals can be very different inside of any organization, but there's usually an approach that's from a governing body or a policy within the organization. But that communication and partnership is, is probably the most critical piece of it. Well, I can imagine right now too, particularly with the pandemic, like you were just mentioning. So um, for the people that are in several different industry verticals, I'm sure you guys are kind of leading the way on this. If, if, uh, if anybody out there uh, in their organization that, that doesn't really have a formal enterprise function, um, how would they go about you know, beginning that? I mean. Where would you begin? I think th there's a couple of different answers to that. And I, I think depending on what role you're in in the organization, you can start where you are. And what I mean by that is the area that you're working in. Um, I, I would look for ways where you, you can you can do some things. You know, take, take your own time to do this, of course. You don't want to be <laughs> trying things out on work time unless it's sanctioned, of course. But... Um, really start to look at how to do things more effectively, more efficiently. And as you start to look at that, you may find some dependencies um, with, to, to data flow or even data sources elsewhere in the organization. And that's where I, I start to look for potential projects that I can't do by myself and I need other people to do. And then I start to, I start to really reach out to them and, and talk to, to the different folks who are, I need their support, I need their help, and I ask them for it. Um, in my 30 plus years, I, I don't recall being rebuffed <laughs> all that frequently when, I, when I'm asking for help, as long as it's really related to trying to solve a legitimate business problem. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of asking how you can help. And it's, I think this, again, it's, it's really a matter of establishing it as a service um, and, and focusing on how, how you can help people to be successful. The more people you can help to be successful, the more successful you can be and the more they'll understand the value that you bring to the table and more importantly, the value that the data and analytics can bring to the organization. Okay. Yeah, I think that's uh, that, that's going to wrap it up for now. Thanks, uh, thanks, Chris. Love uh, the insight on uh, on the importance of uh, a partnership and ways to to navigate organizational complexities and in the strategies for uh, 
for really establishing a culture of enablement. So on behalf of everybody in the audience and us at Opal Group, uh, I'd like to thank you so much again for joining us, Chris. Thanks very much, Bobby, and happy holidays to you, the Opal team, and, and all the audience. Uh, you as well. Thanks so much, Chris. Take care. Have a good rest of the week and, uh, and enjoy the holiday season. You too. Bye now.